I'm Kevin Cameron and I'm wishing that I'd kept the Honda 450 piston that I was lent because I should really have one of those very low ashtray type four stroke pistons to show you at this point. But what I want to talk about is lifetime of critical parts. The designers of new sport bikes spec out the materials and draw up the parts. They're looking at quite a lengthy parts lifetime. Back in the old days of World Superbike and MotoGP, a team might use anywhere from 30 to more than 100 engines in a season. And the reason, principally, was piston cracking. Pistons are constantly being violently accelerated up and down. And in Formula One and MotoGP, piston accelerations of 10,000 times the force of gravity had become a uh, reality. And accelerating a piston up and down by a force applied to the wrist pin means that that force has to go through the wrist pin bosses, which are the parts of the piston through which the wrist pin passes. And in the process of transmitting that force, those wrist pin bosses have a bending moment applied to them and eventually cracks form. Each time that engine RPM is raised, either in the interest of winning races or in the interest of keeping the attention of the sport bike market, greater stresses are applied to the wrist pin bosses and cracking becomes more likely. So at each point, the design has to be studied by means of finite analysis and all sorts of other fancy testing methods. When MotoGP management imposed uh, the idea that each race engine had to last three races, that is six engines for, uh, well no, at first it was five engines for 18 races, there was a mad scramble to redesign their pistons. Yamaha did a thermal study. They developed a thermal model which predicted the temperatures of all parts of the piston, including the crucially stressed area around the wrist pin boss, because fatigue failure is accelerated by high temperature. So Yamaha and presumably the other teams studied temperature distribution in their pistons and they found ways to reduce the temperature in the crucially stressed areas and they were able to make five engines last through 18 races. Similar things, when they make a study like that they learn things that they can apply to street bikes. The other obviously high stress item is a valve spring. A street bike application, the wire stress when the spring, when the valve is lifted, is designed to be quite a small fraction of the ultimate yield strength of the material. But as you are asking the spring to operate at higher and higher pressures, at higher and higher RPM, you have to drive the wire harder. You stress it to an ever-increasing fraction of its ultimate tensile strength. In drag racing, it's a very high fraction such that springs may have to be replaced after every run. MotoGP, before it adopted pneumatic springs, which is just using gas pressure in place of a spring, they were changing the springs every evening. So be glad, riding a street bike, that your valve springs have been designed to last practically forever. Racing has given the manufacturers special knowledge of how to make parts survive high stress, and this can be translated into very durable products for street riding.